Hello, and welcome to episode 9 of uh, how to do this uh, space battle game here in Unity. And today we're going to talk about actually using these uh, space lasers uh, more efficiently. Uh, that is to say, actually hitting things with them. So the first thing to do is to make sure that our dummy ship... Oh wait, this is a video. There we are, that's Unity. First thing to do is to make sure our dummy ship actually has a collision mesh. There it is. Uh, capsule collider, because uh, otherwise we wouldn't be able to hit it. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually have it so that you can hit these things. And uh, there are actually going to be two ways that we do this. We're going to start doing one, and then we're going to kind of switch over a little bit to the other. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually make it so that the weapons do not just blind fire, but instead uh, understand that that fire position is an ideal position. Uh, rather than an absolute position, uh, and we are going to create a ray. Like so. Uh, and then we're going to do a ray cast hit, hit, and then we're going to do uh, if physics dot ray cast uh, ray out hit. Uh, what is that comma there? Uh, and then the distance of uh, and pause minus transform dot position dot magnitude. So if we hit something, then end pause equals hit dot transform. Easy enough, right? Or not hit dot transform, hit dot hit dot point. There we are. Uh, so what we've just done is we've said that if we are actually hitting something, then make that our target. Uh, and we're actually going to change this later so that there's a different method depending on whether you're firing projectiles or, or uh, homing devices or beam weapons. This is the beam weapon way of doing it. And to show you what that accomplishes, I'm going to go ahead and fire through this guy. And you can see that it stops. So uh, we don't actually have... Uh, uh, penetration through the enemy vessel. We just stop at the edge, like so. Easy enough. So if we actually hit something with our beam weapon, we want to deal damage to it, but our ship has no concept of damage. So let's go ahead and give it a concept of damage. So uh, previously we did this weapons thing where we tried to determine the uh, angle delta of the weapons using this mishmash. We're actually going to do the exact same thing now. Uh, and the reason is because we need to have our shields. Uh, we need to determine which shield got hit. So we're going to create a new one called public int which shield. And then vector3 world pause. So delta equals world pause minus transform dot position. And then we find the target angle and we find our angle and we do the exact same math. Uh, however, we actually have a different set of returns. So if angle delta is less than or equal to 45, return 0. That is to say, the first one. Oh, and actually we do have one more problem here. We have this math.abs and we can't, we can't do that anymore which actually makes our math a lot more complex. Uh, and this is actually not less than 45, this is some math up high divided by 4. Uh, this makes our math a little bit more complex because we have to worry about negative values um, and we have to worry about whether or not, uh, you know, what, what's going on. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if angle delta is less than uh, 0, then angle delta, angle delta, plus equals mathf.pi times 2. And then we say if it's greater than mathf.pi, then subtract it out. So this means that uh, this is a... Uh, sorry, I was just thinking about this, and it's not actually ideal. Uh, so let's go ahead and... Uh, uh, we, we took out the uh, float... We'll just put it, put in the, put back in... Uh, equals angle delta in mathf.abs angle delta. 
it's far easier to figure out which shield it is based on the absolute value, but the problem is that you can't tell left from right with the absolute value, but that's okay. What we'll do is we'll, we'll use the non-absolute value for that. Okay. There we go. So if abs delta is less than that, return zero. If abs delta is greater than or equal to mathf.py uh, uh, times 1.5, uh, is it 1.5? 1. 1. Might be 1.75. Uh, you know what? We'll figure it out when, when we actually run it. So now we know that it's either from the left or the right, but we don't know which way. So if angle delta is less than 0, return 1. And if angle delta is greater than 0, return 2. Uh, return 3, and this is 2. So I have a feeling that we're going to find that I've assigned these shields wrong and I have to go back and fix it. But for now, let's go ahead and just do it. So we're just going to do this in a really cheap way right now, and we're just going to reduce the shield by that amount. Uh, shield arc percent, uh, rather change shield level, uh, which shield from pause, negative damage. And over here in weapon, we're going to go ahead and create a new variable called damage. So damage is going to be what we transmit. Um, damage is going to, for a beam weapon like this, decrease over time because the max power will be going down, or the power will be going down. Uh, so here, this is where we did our hit, right? So go ahead and see whether or not it's a ship. Our shields don't have any collision mesh, our weapons don't have any collision mesh, only the core ship has a collision mesh. So hit ship dot damage, uh, uh, power, damage was it? Damage times um, power divided by max power, comma, transformed up position. All right, so shall we see whether or not that works? It doesn't work because we're stupid. Uh, oh. All right, so let's go ahead and come to a stop here and see if we hit this thing. OK, so it's definitely not damaging the right shields. In fact, it looks like it's always damaging shield 3. Oh. Um, let me get these numbers right. All right, turns out the only value I had wrong was this one. Uh, uh, math.pi is the maximum value it can be off by, since we're talking about uh, uh, 180 being the max value doing, due to this. So uh, math.pi times 0.75 is what we were looking to do. Uh, so the only shield that was malfunctioning was the rear shield, which was then defaulting to the right shield instead. So now we have this system where you can take damage. Now obviously the ship itself doesn't have any concept of what it means to take damage yet, so we can lower the shields by an arbitrary amount. But we can't actually hurt the ship inside yet. Uh, however, there's one other thing I wanted to do uh, in this episode, and that is to make it easier to hit ships. Because as you can see, it's easy to miss the ship. Um, and that's a matter of opinion as to how much you want it to be about being able to click on small objects on the screen versus how well you want to be able to uh, uh, handle it uh, more, more fluidly. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a system where the ships will respond to which, whichever ship you have your mouse near it will claim itself to be the active ship. So here in ship, we're going to create a new static variable called highlighted ship, like so. And then uh, down here in uh, on GUI, we're going to say if rect.contains uh, event.current.mousepause, then active ship. Uh, highlighted chip equals this 
uh, else if highlighted ship equals this, highlighted ship equals null. Uh, and this will make sure that you don't, if you're, if you're highlighting empty space, it doesn't keep you attached to the last ship you are on. But this means that the bracket that we put around the ship will always uh, affix us to that ship regardless. So, for example, uh, that didn't, oh yeah, because we forgot to actually dir, um, we forgot to make it so that we're firing upon the target. So here we have uh, screen point dot deray, th this part here. This is only necessary if we're not firing on a ship. So if highlighted ship, uh, sorry, if ship dot highlighted ship does not equal null, then fire at the ship, at the exact position of the ship. Else, do all this stuff. So now we have two fire systems, one for firing at the ship that you're highlighting and one for firing on whatever space you happen to be shooting at. And there are reasons you might do either one. There we go. See? And that'll make it a lot easier to hit ships when you're like in the middle of battle sweeping around and you can just click on them. We don't have anything facing that ship though, so it's hard for me to show you. Uh, so turn towards it and then fire. Zap. So, that's exactly what I want to show you in this episode, and I'll see you next time where we'll actually talk about damaging things.